Hi guys. How's everybody doing? Sorry about the noise in the background. If you can hear, um, I got a hamster. <laughs> I bought him for myself for my birthday. Um, his name's Maynard. He's super cute. And, uh, it's nighttime now, which is apparently his daytime. So he's running around on his wheel. Anyway, um, <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get him tamed enough so that I can, you know, maybe bring him in to a video and <laughs> maybe have him run around on my desk. My hands are probably inky. Um, so, I want to make a couple more of these sort of altered string, you know, envelope thingies. Um, I'm obsessed with these envelopes. Um, they came from Hobby Lobby. And, um, got a super good deal on them. Anytime, you know, Hobby Lobby puts their stuff half price, like pretty much every month. All the paper studio stuff is, is half price at least once a month. So it's a good time to kind of stock up on stuff. Um, and just FYI at a customer's recommendation or a reminder, uh, that sale applies to their website too. So, you know, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you or whatever, uh, check out their website because they actually have some stuff on their website that they don't have in the store. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, like the policy envelopes, they might be in some of the Hobby Lobby locations, but I've never seen them at the store, um, near me. So anyways, but they are on the website. So these are, uh, they come six to a pack for $4.99. And so, you know, half price, do the math, $2.50. And um, so I bought a bunch of them um, a couple weeks ago. And um, yeah, so I did this one and I was pretty happy with it. A couple things I would maybe do differently. I mean, this is, you know, I was just playing around trying to see what would be the most kind of efficient way to make these like say i wanted to make a dozen of them you know and um i wound up using magnets on this one and also on this one i basically did this one the same um <clears throat> as i did that one just to see kind of if i was able to reproduce it you know and i did but, um, I want to also try doing this with a, like a tied closure, like with seam binding or something or something and not use the magnets. Cause I know there are some people who cannot, you know, be around magnets. So I definitely don't want to alienate anybody based on that. Um, you know, and I was thinking about some other ways that maybe I could, I could, uh, do closures on these, but. For this, I think we're probably going to wind up doing a couple of videos for this, uh, you know, because I'd like to go through making some tags and that kind of stuff to put in them. But for now, we'll just kind of work on the envelope part. And um, these I made using uh, one of Tracy Fox's digital kits. It's a, the botanical plates kit that she has. It, it's an older kit. It's not brand new, but um, if you go to her shop there, it's on the same, I think it's on the first page of her shop still. So anyways, um, and just printed them out in different sizes and stuff. Um, it's the same. That's the kit that I used in uh, the policy envelope thingy. Anyways, I'm not going to use that. What I think I'm going to do is sort of a, like a bird theme on, on, this one that we're going to work on and um, using basically repurposing stuff, you know, instead of using a digital thing. I, I want to try to um, use book pages and things like that and, and um, kind of keep it that way. So <clears throat> I've got some envelopes, some other envelopes too, that I want to, talk about let's see let me give you the measurement on this envelope so you kind of know what size we're talking about so it's nine inches long 
and six inches wide. Okay. So I had three different size envelopes that I'm going to basically attach to this. And um, these are envelopes that I've had in my stash, uh, mostly picked up at thrift stores, except for these. I actually purchased these at uh, clearbags.com. And I have tons of these. So if you want some of these little mini envelopes, just send me an email and uh, I'll hook you up. Okay, because I think I bought like a thousand of them. Anyways, um, so these came from thrift store. I don't know, I think like 25 cents or something. But let me tell you the dimensions on these. So this one is, and this one I'm going to cut it down just a tiny bit. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So this is five and three quarters by four and just over a quarter. What is that? five sixteenths or something. <laughs> Anyways, just a little bit more than four. I guess it's four and three eighths. That's what it is. Um, okay. So that one and that one's white, but it's not going to matter. And honestly, you can use whatever color envelopes you want for this because they're going to get completely covered up. So, and you don't have to worry about coffee dyeing them or whatever. Um, everything's going to get inked and all that too. So yeah, if you have blue envelopes, use them. Um, so this one is, oh my gosh, five and one eighth by three and five eighths. Okay. And then this little baby one is gosh, why can't everything just be like a regular size? It's like almost three and three quarters by two and three quarters. Okay. So it's a small envelope. Um, I would say, you know, you could use other types of envelopes, but I don't really think it would work exactly the same. I mean, you could probably figure it out, but you kind of need the flap on these because that's what's going to work as the hinge. Okay. So this, just so you know, guys, this is totally inspired by Wendy, uh, Wendy's journal adventures and, uh, also Tracy Fox. They've been doing some pretty cool stuff with envelopes and not to mention Rachel, um, Roxy creations, Rachel, um, just altering envelopes and stuff and playing around with them. So, you know, I thought that looks like so much fun. Anyways, <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover the fronts of these envelopes. I'm not going to work on this yet, so we don't need that right now. Um, basically what I've been doing is using some type of image on this one and then a pattern that's complementary to that on this one and then another smaller image on this one. Okay. Um, just because I think it kind of helps to set off the, you know, the color and the, the tone and that kind of thing. So I want to choose something now, part of it's going to be covered, right? But <clears throat> see, cause see, so I, I'm not too concerned with what's right here because it's going to, it's covered when you're just looking at the front. But I think, I don't know. I mean, I just want to, oh, you know what I think I'll do is use eggs. Yeah, I think I'm just going to use eggs. Um, this is just a sheet of bird's eggs that I found online. Oh, okay. So we only need one of each of these. Sorry guys. I don't do this very often. So <laughs> I'm a little scattered. I apologize. Okay. So I've just got one of each of those, those size envelopes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I don't need those at the moment. So what I want to do, since I'm going to be gluing this on the back of this, I'm going to just kind of cut this down so I know exactly where the edge is. 
on the edge of my images. So I guess this is not an actual book page. I do have some actual book pages of bird's eggs that I probably should have used, but I'm not. I'm using this. Okay. Executive decision. I think I want to try to use these larger ones down at the bottom. So I'm just going to sort of eyeball this just to make sure that when I attach my envelope, I you know, sort of know exactly where it's going to go. Um, so this envelope is actually going to be attached on the back of the, of this, of the large envelope like that. Okay. So just, it's important that you make sure you maintain your top and bottom. Um, I would mark it now, but it's going to get covered. So it, you know, wouldn't do me any good anyways. So anyway, um, so I just want to make sure that I, you know, am orienting that correctly, okay? So I'm going to glue from that onto here, okay? I guess, <laughs> wait a second, it would help if I had glue that wasn't all ended. Okay, um, I'm going to pretty much use glue stick for this whole project, you know? Um, you know, feel free to use whatever glue you like. I love the Elmer's all purpose glue sticks. I wouldn't necessarily use the school glue one just because, you know, I don't know how permanent it is. Okay. So I'm actually gonna, I'm more worried about this edge than the top because I'm going to be trimming the envelope down a little bit anyways. Okay. I'll try to keep the glue cleaned up as I go. Okay. So then I just want to trim. Oh, wow. That worked out perfect because I think it lined up right at the edge of that image on the bottom. Yep. Okay. So that one. And then, and I like to keep this envelope handy so that I can just kind of keep putting it together, like, you know, temporarily so that I don't get confused. So this one, I want the flap to go on this side of this, of the medium envelope. Okay. And then this envelope is going to get attached on the other side of the front um, at the very bottom. Okay. Um, see, I need to trim this down because I don't want it to hit that part. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be trimming that down maybe a half an inch or so. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> on this one, I want to do some kind of Oh, maybe like even some kind of collage or something. Um, I've got some ledger. I've got some ledger paper. Now, if you want to be able to write on that front, on the front of that envelope, then, you know, for sure you want to use something that is, you know, friendly for writing on. Um, I'm going to take some of this ledger and <clears throat> maybe a little bit of, uh, like a book page too. Just a second. Sorry, guys. Just grab some different sort of colors or tones of book paper. Okay, this will work. That one and then 
use a little bit of this one. When I save book pages, I really try to just make sure, um, not necessarily, I'm not necessarily looking at the content of the paper, I'm looking, or of the pages, I'm looking more at the texture and stuff, like the tone and the texture of the, pr of the font and the print, um, you know, so that I get some kind of, some like variation in the, the type of print that's on the, that's on the, um, the book page. So this is from an old dictionary. It's pretty brittle paper, so I need to be kind of careful while I'm putting that glue on. Make sure my envelope's still in the right orientation. Okay. And then I'm going to tear off the top of this because I would prefer a torn edge at the top. Actually, I'm going to just apply the glue on the envelope this time. Oops. Okay. Sorry about my, you know, psychotic sort of rant on my last video where I was showing my, um, my little, you know, uh, tag packs and stuff. <laughs> I should probably just delete that video, I, <clears throat> but I don't know. I just sometimes, sometimes I have controversial opinions about things and <laughs> maybe I should just learn how to keep my mouth shut. But anyways, okay. So I'm just inking that a little bit around the edge just cause I want it to kind of stand out. Okay. Use my baby wipe to sort of smooth everything out and that sort of spreads the ink out too. Okay. <clears throat> I got to try to keep my mess cleaned up too or else it'll I'll just go nuts while I'm doing this. Okay. I'm going to actually let that dry just a little bit before I try to trim it up. Okay, so this one goes that way, this one goes that way with the flap on the right hand side. So I want to do some kind of image on here. Um, but I'd like to give it some sort of a border. Um, You know what? I think I'm just going to do I have some um, this is just marbled paper you can find online uh, like um, or this I might have scanned from a book. I can't remember but you can find um, downloads like free um public domain images of um marbled paper you know and then just download it and then you can print it just make sure that it's you know public domain um so i'm just using this as sort of like a border and then the image that i use i'm going to sort of tear it down and maybe do some collaging with it also Okay, so this, since I didn't put glue all over the paper, I put it on the envelope. It's easier to trim it up. Sorry, I guess I need to try to remember to stay in frame. Okay. So that's cool. And then, you know what? I think I'm just going to take a little um, 
from this little, let me see. These were mostly like, yeah, I don't want any of those birds. Let's see what's in here. <clears throat> um, oh yeah, see. Let's use that one. Or no, this one. This one's good. Okay, let's use that bird. Okay. So I'm just gonna... Tear it out like that. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the text on there. Let me tear this edge off too. You guys hear the hamster? He's so loud. Okay. Stick that down. And then what I like to do lately, I'm just crazy about masking tape lately. Sort of my thing, you know? See, this is going to be kind of long, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I think I'll split it into a couple videos so that... You know, you guys don't see that it's like four hours long and be like, yeah, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'll just take some masking tape. Just kind of. So that it looks like the masking tape is holding it on there, you know. And put a little piece right there and a little piece up there. There we go. And I can add like a label or something like that on here later. Um, and I'm going to be doing some, some stitching on this too with the sewing machine. So, okay. So let that one dry for a second. Let me trim this one. And then... We're going to cut open the tops of these envelopes and make them into pockets. If you guys have watched Wendy or Tracy or Rachel or anybody else who's making envelope thingies, um, you know what I'm saying. Okay. So this one, I want to, I think I'm going to cut it like just right above these eggs um and I think that'll give me plenty of space and I'm just gonna eyeball it I'm not measuring anything I never measure anything okay so that you know is obviously destroying the integrity of the envelope right but that's okay because we're gonna be putting something on the back of this anyways that's gonna pull it back together so I'm just going to use my hole punch or my, yeah, I guess it's a hole punch. It's a large hole punch. I think this is a, well, yeah, this is one and a half inch. So I'm just going to eyeball it in the center and then do a little, little trimmy thing on that corner. Okay, make that smooth. And then what I've been doing is just doing a little, um, you know, some kind of paper inside to sort of cover up the starkness of the, you know, the envelope. So it doesn't necessarily have to go all the way to the edges. It just needs to be big enough to... Um, fill that space right there. Okay. So this is just a scrap of ledger and just glue it right on that edge. 
doesn't have to be perfect. It can stick out a little bit because you're going to, you know, you can trim it off anyways. There we go. Okay. And then I want to ink the edge of, of this. Uh, this is a good opportunity to do it while the envelope is sort of slashed open. You know what I mean? And then I'm also going to ink the, the back of it. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink the rest of it now on the front because otherwise it I'll, <laughs> I'll forget. And then I'll, the whole, and then I'll be like, what the heck is wrong with that? Okay. Um, I don't need to do the back yet. Okay. And then this guy. Okay. So this one's going to set right about there. Okay. This one is going to come into that opening a little bit and I kind of don't want that. So this one I'm also going to cut down about a half an inch. Okay. So then I'm going to take a, this is a little bit smaller punch. So this is the one inch one. Trim it. Okay, and then I want to add something there behind it. Might as well just use another piece of this ledger. And it just needs to be a little piece, you know, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to fill up that whole, the whole top it just needs to be enough to cover that hole or that gap. Okay. And then I'm going to ink this one. back. Okay. And then all around the edges. Part of it's going to get covered up anyways, but I just think, you know, it's better to just, just ink it. Okay. So that one's done. And then as far as placement, so this one goes here, this one's going to go here, and this one's going to go here. So this one I don't really need to cut down at all. Um, I just need to cut the very top of that open. Very small little, little slice. I didn't get it all the way. Okay, 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 here. All right, that should do it. Okay, so that one's open. And then an even smaller little punch to do my notch on this one. And I'm eyeballing that in the center. I'm going to trim it. And then I want to add something inside there. Just using my little scraps. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Right? Okay. Glue strings. There we go. And then I'm going to ink this. I really need to change the pad on this thing. 
So if you got one of these inkers from me, um, you know, the best way to get that pad off, if you use hot glue, is using a heat gun. I just use a heat gun and like a um, um, popsicle stick. Okay, so this is our basic, this is the basic idea here. There, it's going to go like that. Okay, so it kind of just layers up nicely. I could add like a little, you know, like maybe a glassine envelope or something right here. Or, you know, something to add some interest on this envelope. I could add like a little tag or I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want to add another, like another image, like a bird or anything like that. But I think a label might be nice right there. I don't know. I'm not going to yet, but, um, okay. So that is basically doing the fronts of those envelopes. Okay. And then <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to get some stitching on these while I have the opportunity. Um, well, oh, wait, no, 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 hold on, hold the phone. First, I need to cover the back of this, okay? I don't need to do anything with that yet, but I do want to cover the back of this. So I need some kind of, I like cardstock, some kind of cardstock weight paper on there and I like I would like for that to be writable like so you could write on it if you want to so Tracy Fox is responsible for this again um, <laughs> this uh, grid paper that I printed on heavy craft cardstock. Okay, so this is gonna go right there. All right, so basically, um, I'm just putting some glue right along the edge of the remainder of the top of this envelope on the back, right? trying not to get any glue on this part. Okay. I added some on that little piece that's sticking out from the, you know, the piece that we put on the back. But, um, I mean, you know, I could measure this and all that, but Hey, I don't really feel like measuring anything because I'm just going to trim it off. Okay. So you want to leave a tiny bit of a gap between the, the fold of the envelope because you're going to need a little bit of space there because of the bulk of the envelope when it's got to wrap around the back of this one. So you do want to sort of, you know, leave a little tiny bit of a gap. Okay. And then I'm going to trim being careful not to cut the bottom of my envelope open, which I did before. Or the side and if you do it's not like a huge deal because you're gonna be stitching around it anyways but you know if you can avoid it it's probably better okay so I've added some writing space on the back of this envelope okay so it's gonna flip out like that and then you can write on it this is gonna get stitched down so I don't need to worry about gluing that down right now it's it's gonna go into the sewing machine and and get stitched down so I need to do that on so this these two it's important that you do them in a a, a, a certain order because the backing that you put on this envelope is actually gonna be covering the flap of this envelope okay so you want to do the small one first instead of the medium one first. You want to do the small one. Um, let 
You might as well. <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to do. Hold on. Hold the phone. Okay, so I always save all these. You know, these are just the end papers from, you know, different books that I tear apart. So um, I want to use that. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right onto that edge, being careful not to get any glue on the inside of the pocket. All the way up to the edge, though, of the sides and the top. And to kind of minimize on trimming, I'm going to just glue it right on the edge there. Okay, so I want to, I'm going to have to fold this back, that flap, to trim this. Okay. So remember, this is going to still be open because we're, it's going to get stitched down anyway, so it's okay. Okay, so that one's done. And then I want to go ahead and glue this one on here now before I put the backing on, on the other envelope, on the medium size envelope. Okay, so I'm going to... Add some glue onto the flap. And you do want to make sure you get the glue all the way up, right up to the edge there. Okay. You got to make sure that everything is in the right position. Okay. So that just sticks down there. This glue is awesome. I love this, um, the Elmer's all-purpose glue sticks. I love them. Okay. I need a new baby wipe. All right. So see, that's going to flip out like that. Now I need to cover the back of this one. So that's why we needed to do the small one first, right? So let's see. I still kind of like to use a little bit heavier paper just easier to work with. Oh, you know what? I might as well just use this. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and use the other part of this. So this, again, just glue right up to the edge. Go right over that flap that we just glued on there. You do want to make sure that you glue this um, down pretty well because if you don't, then you wind up with this little piece that sort of catches on um, things that you put in the pocket. So, anyways. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap. So that this has plenty of room, you know, to bend around the back of the envelope. Hold on. It's crooked and it's driving me nuts. Just a second. Okay. I'll make sure that still opens. Okay. And then trim this one be stitching around everything so you know it's not a huge deal about <clears throat> okay all right so that's covered up and now I'm going to ink 
I want to ink the back of this now because after I stitch it, it's going to be really hard to do that. Okay, and then I'm also going to ink the back of this one. Kind of grunge it up. All right. Cool. Okay. And then I want to ink the back of this one too. All right. Doesn't really show too much on that craft paper, but I think it, it does add a certain amount of like aging or whatever okay so let me grab my sewing machine real quick and I'll show you kind of the stitching that I want to do right away um I'm also going to do some I'm just going to do a little bit of stitching on the on these I'm not going to stitch on that yet How long is this? Oh my gosh, it's 41 minutes already. Holy moly. Okay. All right. Hopefully you guys can see okay. So I'm going to definitely want to stitch this edge down right here, okay? So I'm going to do a zigzag. And I'm just going to, you know, it kind of defaults the, the default setting for zigzag on these brother machines or on this particular one is uh, 1.4 length and 3.5 width okay so i'm pretty sure that that's going to catch that piece of paper that's on the back okay when i when i run this stitch um yeah it is I just want to make sure that my stitch doesn't go over the seam or you know over the edge of the of the card right oh where's my little tiny scissors here they are okay so see it it caught the very edge of that that paper on the other side Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and just, I should have just continued on, but I wanted to make sure on that back to make sure that it was actually catching, but I'm just going to go ahead and zigzag around the rest of the envelope. I'm stitching right up to the edge, basically. And you do lose, you know, a tiny bit of the um, space inside your envelope, but not that much. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to a straight stitch. And um, I'm going to stitch around this envelope and this envelope. But I want to do it on the front of the envelope because that's just how I am. I like the stitching the, the top of the stitch to be on the top and I'm going to go a little bit longer on the stitch I'm just right on the very edge of the envelope hoping that it's catching that paper on the back If you don't want to sew this or stitch this or you don't have a sewing machine, 
you don't have to just glue it it's fine just glue it if you don't okay and then this one i'm going to do the same thing starting on the very edge of the envelope And yeah, the glue might be a tiny bit wet still in there, but it's not bad. I mean, okay, so see, I think I missed the, um, the flap. Yeah, I missed it. So I'm just going to run one more stitch. I went too close to the edge. I should use a zigzag, but meh, no big deal. I got it. I got the edge of that paper. Okay, so now the pocket is closed. I caught it. See? Okay. So that and that. All right, so that's the, um, basically the prep on the envelopes that we're doing on the front of the, the big envelope. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, start it uploading, and then uh, I'll start filming the second part, okay? And hopefully I'll be able to get it done in uh, one more, one more video, okay? Since this is, you know, 46 minutes or so right now. Okay, so that's as far as we've gotten, and um, yeah. Anyway, and I think I'm going to try to do... Well, I'll go ahead and do magnet closures on this one and then, um, but maybe, maybe I could show you how I would actually add like a wrap around or a tie closure too. So, um, anyway, okay guys, so I will see you in, you know, just a few. Okay. Love you. Bye.